Hello and welcome to this first video in a three-part series on going from Blender to Unity. We're going to be making an oil barrel here today. We'll start with a high poly and then make a low poly. To follow this tutorial, you need a basic understanding of Blender, Photoshop and Unity. Let's get started. So press Shift A, Mesh and Cylinder. Set the vertices down the bottom left here to 24, the radius to 0.28 and the depth to 0.85. There we are, and we'll move it up just a little so it sits on the grid. Now press tab to jump into edit mode. We're going to add a few loop cuts here so that we can add a rim around here and around here. So press Ctrl R, scroll up till we've got four cuts, and then click to place. And click once more. Now jump over to face select, hold down Alt, and right click on this edge, and that will select all the faces going around here. We're going to scale that down on the z-axis, so that's S followed by Z, and we're going to do that by 0 0.4. Exact same down here, hold down Alt and right click there, scale Z 0 0.4. There we are. We're going to leave those for the time being, and we're going to make a lip going around the top here. So right click on the top, hold down Shift, right click on the bottom. Press I to inset, move it in just a little bit. Press I to inset again and scale it down on the z-axis and I to inset once more and then scale it down on the z-axis and there we are now we're going to add a couple more cuts just here and just here so that's control R again click move it up just below the top and click to place and same on the bottom and there we are right now jump back to face select down the bottom here hold down Alt and right click on these faces and then hold down Shift and Alt and right click there so we've got both of those selected. Now down here on the bottom left we have pivot point we're going to set that to individual origins so that we can inset and scale these individually. So I'm just going to switch to orthographic view here with the numpad Now inset it just a little bit to there inset it again this is just like we did with the lip up the top and I'm going to scale it out and I'm going to inset it once more and scale it out a little more. I might want to do that a little more. I'm just going to redo that. I'll inset it, I'll scale it out, and I'll inset it again and scale it out just a little less. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Now, we're going to add a little cap just up here. So press Shift A and click on Circle. We're going to scale that. Um, oh yes, we're going to have to set the pivot point back to median point, which is the default. We're going to scale that down nice and small, move it up so it's just sitting on the top there, and move it over to the side and scale it in. Yeah, that's a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, press E to extrude and Z for the Z axis. Oh, actually, before we do that, we're going to have to go from face select to edge select. Okay, now we do that extrude, Z axis, move it up just a little, and F, which will make a face in there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the lip up the top here. We're going to inset it just a little bit and click to place, inset it just a little more, and then move it down and inset it one last time and move it down just a bit more. There we are, that does the trick. Right, now we're going to have to add some smooth shading on this. So press tab to enter object mode, right click on your object, and on the left here, hit on smooth, and tab to re-enter edit mode. You'll notice at the moment it does look quite weird. We need to tell it which edges are going to be sharp and which edges are going to be smooth. So back in edit mode, hold down alt and right click this edge around here. We're going to make that one sharp. Hold down shift and alt, right click there. Down the bottom here going to right click there, make sure to keep Alt and Shift held down, we'll do that as well, and just a couple here, there, and I might have to go inside here, there we are. Now press Ctrl E and mark sharp. That won't have taken any effect of that yet, so jump over to modifiers here, which is a little picture of a spanner over on the right hand side, add modifier and edge split. Turn off edge angle and just leave sharp edges on. So there we are, that is our high poly finished. 
what we're going to do is create a low poly now. Now, since it's a very simple shape, we could just create a new cylinder. But for the sake of demonstration, we're going to reduce the poly count on this object we've created here. So go Shift D to make a duplicate of it. M to move to another layer and click on the layer across from it. And down the bottom here, we can change what layer we're on. So we're going to jump over to that now. Tab to enter edit mode. Down the bottom in the middle here, we have our snap settings. So the magnet here makes things automatically snap onto one another when they're close. And this here is the snap element. We want to set that to vertex. And over here on the right, we have something that will automatically merge vertices when they're on the same location. Make sure that is on. And A to deselect what we got selected at the moment. So as you can see up the top right here, we have the triangles, 1530. Now watch what happens when I drag this vertice here over to there and click. You notice that's gone down to 1528. So as you can see, by merging these, we reduce the number of triangles, which is what we want to do. So let's start on the bottom here. Hold down Alt, right click that to select it. We're not, we're just going to move it down a little for a start, so it's in line with that. Alt and select the next one, move it down so it's in line. There we are. Now select the first one again. I'm going to scale that out and put your cursor over the next vertice out and it should just snap to it. And then click to place. And as you can see, the triangle has gone down to 1400 now. Do that again, scale out and click to place and scale out and click to place. There we are. Now let's go over to the top and do the same thing. Ah, one thing first, we'll want to get rid of this cap. So I'll just go to the top view and turn on this um, limit selection, turn off limit selection to visible, should I say. Just select that and delete vertices. There we are. Right, now exact same thing with the top as we did with the bottom. Alt select, move it up so it's in line with that. Alt and select the next one, move it up so it's in line with that. Click the first one again, scale it out and snap it, and scale it out and scale it out. There we are. Now what we're going to want to do is get rid of this rim around here and around here. So let's start by grabbing these here and move them down, snap them to that. I'm going to do the same up the top here, select those, move them up, snap them to that. There we go. And I'm going to switch to a side-on orthographic view for this with the numpad. Right. Remember, hold down Alt and right click on that to select it. We're going to scale it in and let it snap to that vertice there. Alt and select the next one, scale it in and snap it to that vertice there. Alt and select the next one and scale it in. It doesn't seem to want to quite snap to that one properly, so we'll just do that manually. It doesn't have to be exact, so long as things are close enough, they will snap anyway. We'll place that there and we'll scale this one in roughly there as well. Might do this one a little more. There we go, that's close enough. Same again with this one up here. Alt and select, scale it in. Alt and select, scale it in. Alt and select, scale it in. And Alt and select, scale it in. There we are. Now we just have to merge this lot. So Alt select that again. And then we're just going to grab it, move it up to the next one where it snaps and let go. We just got to do that for each of them. And as you can see, look at the triangle count at the top right 1716, boom. 668. We do that again, bam, 620. So each time we do that, we're reducing the number of triangles in our object, which is what we need for putting this in a game. So just work your way through, get rid of each of those, and done. Right, so that is our low poly finish there. Now, as I said earlier, you could just create a new cylinder, but this is for the sake of demonstration. You can do this with much more complex objects to reduce the number of triangles. One last thing we'll want to do is sort out the smooth shading on the low poly here. So press tab to enter edit mode, hold down alt and right click on those edges. Press control E and then mark sharp. Do the same thing down the bottom here, hold down alt, right click to select those. Press control E and mark sharp. There we go. So what we've done today is create a high poly oil barrel over here with 1530 tries and then we managed to turn that into 92 triangles which will run great in our game. The next tutorial will cover how to normal map this. So we'll be taking the normals from this object here and putting them on this. Essentially that will allow you to see the details that we've added here such as the rim, the lip and the cap there projected onto this object here.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and I'll see you in the next one.